All right, YouTube. I'm going to do this video about Gianni Versace. Um, the untold truth of his murder. Okay. Um, as far as the fashion world knows and was concerned, Gianni Versace was a rock star. Even though those who didn't follow fashion knew his name, which is why on July 15, 1997, his assassination on the steps of his South Beach mansion made headlines across the world. The murder was insanely bold, taking place in broad daylight as Versace returned from his morning walk to a nearby cafe for his daily coffee. He was opening the gates to his home when a man approached him, shot him twice, and ran. The location became a site of pilgrimage for mourners who covered the steps of flowers as soon as the police concluded their investigation at the scene. Witnesses who had seen the entire thing were interviewed and detained. Miami was later put on alert and a strange case unfolded. Decades later, there are still unanswered questions. Antonio DeMarco or D'Amico speaks out after 20 years. Okay. Who was also a very handsome man. I'll include a picture of him. At the time of the murder, Versace's longtime partner, Antonio D'Amico, was in their South Beach home. He appeared at the front of the house immediately after hearing the gunfire and was fast enough that he saw Versace's killer. When police arrived, he accompanied them on a search for the assassin. The murder of a loved one is something that haunts friends and family forever. April 2017, D'Amico still found himself reliving the horror. I heard the shot, he told Keith Morrison for NBC reporter, the death of Gianni Versace at Dateline Investigation. My heart just stopped, stopped beating. Something said to me, something happened. Anyway, I ran out and then I saw Gianni laying down on the stairs in blood. D'Amico has remained fairly silent on the circumstances surrounding the murder and the investigation until now, according to News.com uh, Australia. He also cut off all friendly contact with the Versace family. D'Amico and Donatella Versace have had a rocky relationship at times, and since the tie that bound them was gone, his silence was extended to her too. Versace had met his killer before. Every morning, usually between 8.30 and 9 a.m., Versace would head down the street to the news cafe to have a cup of coffee and pick up a handful of magazines. After drinking his coffee there, he would head back home. The Miami Herald quoted a hostess at the cafe as saying that whoever had killed him must have known the routine. And when Vanity Fair traced killer Andrew Cunningham's movements backwards from his ultimate end on the South Beach houseboat. They found that the two had met at least once before. When reporter Maureen Oath spoke to Cunan's friends, they said that he had mentioned Versace by name more than once. They had met at least once that they confirm on October 21st, 1990, while at a club in San Francisco called Colossus. One, one of the people Earth spoke, Orth spoke to had been there and said that Versace Eason seemed to recognize him from previous encounter at the designer's Lake Como home. QAnon then said oozed pleasure at being recognized, but whether or not they truly had met before that night couldn't be substantiated. 
Rumor had it that Versace had been spotted in a car with Cunanan in San Francisco, too, but that was never substantiated with an eyewitness either. Who was Andrew Cunanan? Versace, Versace's killer was ultimately identified as Andrew Cunanan, a 27-year-old who had a spot on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. Even though the manhunt on, ended on July 23rd, only days after Versace's murders, murder, justice was stubbornly exclusive. Police discovered Cunanan's body on a houseboat only three miles from the world-famous murder site. Cunanan's own death was ruled a suicide, and there was no note. Vanity Fair took a look at the strange life of the killer, describing him as a charming liar who was fascinated by dark and statistic things. Tracing his footsteps took reporter Maureen Earth between Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, San Francisco, and San Diego before reaching Miami and into an underground part of the gay community. He was found to have an obsession with S&M and that he had already left a trail of bodies be behind him before his murder spree ended with the execution of Versace. Those who knew him told stories of a high-class gay escort who worked in both Florida and California, a showman who professed his role in drug trade and who targeted older, wealthy men and made and made many of those around him uncomfortable. Most eerie of all were the words of Frank Scott Scottolini, manager of South Beach nightclub called Twist. Scottolini remembered Cunanan as being in the club the weekend before the murder, and when he left, he also remembers remarking to the bartender, there goes the gay serial killer. His words were pro prophetic and they later identified Cunanan from the surveillance video. Cunanan's other victims. By the time Cunanan's uh, murder spree came to an end with Versace's death, law enforcement had already established a list of other deaths that were attributed to him, according to the Washington Post. That started with a Jeffrey trial and an ex-Navy man and a district manager from Minnesota propane company who had left San Diego for Bloomington in the fall of 1996. In April of 97, Cunningham had caught up with him and bludgeoned him to death with a claw hammer. That murder happened in the apartment of Cunningham's second victim and according to Crime Feed, it was the shooting death of an architect named David Mason that kicked off the murder spray in earnest. After killing, after the killing trail and Mason, Cunanan headed for Chicago. His third victim and a 72-year-old real estate tycoon credited with help to shape the Chicago skyline was found by his wife. According to Skyline, Cunningham had no connection with Lee Miglin or their family, leaving it a mystery as to why he had killed this businessman with gardening shears and a screwdriver. Cunningham stole Miglin's Lexus, abandoning it a week later near the body of his fourth victim, a secretary, a secretary, I'm sorry, a cemetery caretaker named William Reese. Reese, who was known for helping visitors to the cemetery find their ancestors' names among the Civil War memorials, had been shot once in the head. It was Reese's pickup truck that Canaan installed that then used as a pit stop to change his clothes after shooting his final victim, Gianni Versace. Cunningham's plan to flee the country. According to CNN, Versace's assassin may have been the culmination mm -hmm. of the killing spray. Mm -hmm. On July 25th, just days after Cunningham's suicide, mm -hmm. the FBI released information that suggested mm -hmm. he had been trying to flee the country. Cunningham had reached out to an unnamed acquaintance to see if he could get his hands on a passport. <coughs> 
excuse me, and suspiciously, suspiciously that acquaintance had reached out to law enforcement even amid the media frenzy that was stirred up by the search for answers. Information is frustratingly scant, but according to FBI Deputy Director William Esposito, not only had Cunningham's passport been found in the car he had stolen from William Reese, but he had his acquaintance had discussed 10 individuals as a possible source for a new passport. Those sources had been warned that their names had come up in discussion with the killer and also, according to the FBI, the information only came to light when known associates of Cunningham were being questioned. Whatever Cunningham's post-murder plans might have been, no one is entirely sure. According to the Los Angeles Times, whatever he had been planning might have been foiled by a completely unrelated car accident that had happened in front of the parking garage where he left Reese's stolen truck, which may have forced him to remain in the area. <sighs> the official autopsy reveals, since Cunningham had so shot Versace in broad daylight in front of witnesses, there wasn't much mystery around circumstancing around his death. But when police released the official documents pertaining to the murder later that year, CNN found there were more than 700 pages of findings, including the autopsy report. The Sun Sentinel reported on one particular detail of the autopsy that was particularly chilling. Although it had originally been claimed that Cunningham had come up behind Versace and shot him twice while he was opening the gate to his home, Autopsy findings from the Daddy Medical Examiner's Office suggested that Versace had actually turned and looked at Cunningham before being shot in the face. The wounds to his face, originally thought to be exit wounds, were actually the entrance wounds, and only one of the bullets that was fired was recovered. Retired FBI agent Peter Sermon Semrak noted that it wasn't uncommon that Cunningham had damaged the faces of his previous victim as well. Sermrak also said it was a signature of a rage clailing. A lawsuit needed to be filed to keep photos from becoming public. Not all the information regarding the Versace murder was released to the public. And when CNN reported that hundreds of pa papers had been released by the FBI under the state's Public Record Act, there were no photos included in this release. Versace's family had to file a lawsuit in order to keep the photos from being released to the public, and that lawsuit was the only way to keep them from being accessible under the same laws that made the FBI files on the case public. CNN quoted that the family spokesperson, Lou Cola Sunon, no, as saying, we're just asking for respect for a guy who was a murder victim. Gianni Versace was the victim of a serial killer, and we should treat him like a victim with respect. Cunningham's odd ties to, ger to a German fugitive. Cunningham ended his own life on, the house on his houseboat before brought to justice. When law enforcement investigated the houseboat, they found some bizarre things. First, CNN reported that Cunningham had been living on the houseboat, which was sitting along Miami Beach, about two miles from Versace's mansion, for at least a few days before he was discovered. Police found him by literally going door to door in that area and discovering, discovering his body after a caretaker reported reported hearing a gunshot coming from the boat. Originally, it was believed that the boat's owner was Torstan Rennick, and Rennick was identified as a German fugitive with a rap sheet that included fraud charges. Whether Cunningham, whose body was identified by thumbprints, had known the houseboat owner, or if he had stumbled across the empty boat, was unknown. But the whole thing took another strange twist. The Las Vegas Sun reported that Renanek wasn't the houseboat's owner at all, and that had it had been sold to a contractor named Raul. Raul only learned of the incident on televisions and said that he had nothing to do with either Rednick or Cunanan. Stranger still, 
was the fact that not only was Renek the owner of the spa that catered to gay clientele, but he had opened his business under the name Torsten Raul. As for the houseboat itself, it sank in December 1997, and CNN reported that there was no foul play suspected. Okay. Interesting. There were no claims of mafia connections to this murder, which why would there be? Just because he was Italian? In 2010, Telegraph reported on a new book that hit shelves, included some pretty shocking accusations. The book, Metatassi, was wit written by Giuseppe Di Bella and one time member and branch of the mafia called Nedreghita, if I'm pronouncing that right. According to him, Versace's murder was orchestrated by the mob as payback for outstanding debts that he hadn't settled. Claims were made that Versace's business was used by the mafia to launder money and that he was another part to the plan. The mob had originally intended to steal, steal Versace's ass, ashes and then ransom them back from the family, but that part never happened. The Versace family issued a statement saying not only were the claims 100% not true, but what they were were shameful. Whether the claims were true or not, it wasn't the first time that Versace's name had been mentioned in the same breath as Mafia that ran the businesses of southern Italy from the shadows. In 1994, the Independent ran a piece on not only Versace's extravagance, but on how numbers associated with businesses really added up. They reported that there were whispers about his connection to the mob and also noted that he was born in Rig, R what, Riggio, Calabria, the hometown of that particular mafia family. Now, a lot of Italian actors or singers or fashion designers, etc., businessmen, sometimes they did go to the mafia um, in the beginning for a loan or, you know, a, uh, what's the word? A favor um, to get them started in, in the business. Um, and then they were called upon later on um, to pay that debt back. Uh, I know that's, it sounds stupid. It sounds like a Godfather movie, but that, that really did happen. Um, for many uh, Italian Americans and Ita Native Italians that com came over here and sought to start businesses or wanted to be in Hollywood, um, they didn't have the money to back them up, but the mafia family said. So, with that being said, it's a possibility that he was mob affiliated, but I do not feel in my gut, that the mob was involved in his murder. So, moving on from that. The Versace family's bizarre tangle with private investigator. Frank Monty is a private investigator who's made some astonishing claims, including supposedly recovering the skull of heir Michael Rockefeller from the remote tribes of Papua New Guinea. In 1997, he also claims to have inside information on what really happened to Gianni Versace. But tracking down just what it was is a little tricky. According to a profile in The Independent in 2001, a gag order made it illegal for them to even repeat the claims. There's that famous word again that I keep bringing up, the gag order. They do say, though, that Monty says that Cunningham wasn't simply the serial killer that he was painted as. The entire thing was supposed to be detailed along with his other adventures and his autobiography, but the Versace family filed a lawsuit to keep the spying game off the shelves. 
So not only did they fire a lawsuit for the murder pictures and scene, crime scene, etc., not to get out to the public, but they also stopped this book um, from being put on the shelves. Um, does that mean that there was something true to this story? Possibly. Or they just didn't want Gianni's name to be um, dragged through the mud. Vogue reported a little more on the suit, which saw the Versace family heading to Australia to, Australia to stop the book from being published. They revealed that they there were claims that not only had he been hired by Gianni Versace to protect him in the years before his murder, but also that he was indeed mafia involvement. There were also accusations that Versace siblings had something to do with the murder as well, and no wonder they filed a lawsuit against Monty and the book, which ultimately pulled from publication, according to Monty's blog. The book was rewritten and released in 2003 with a footnote that claims have been substantiated by the 2010 release of Metastachi. I have to look into that book. Um, the FBI documents that define the murder as retribution. Motive for the killings has always been something of a mystery. Built in 2014, ABC's I-Team uncovered FBI files that claim the murder was for a simple reason. QAnon wanted retribution. According to the files, QAnon's unraveling came after San Diego counselor gave him information on the spread of AIDS. He vowed to track down anyone who might have given it to him and documents quoted Kuyanin as telling friends, if I had AIDS or if someone did that to me, I would go on a five-state killing spree and take everyone with me. Kuyanin was linked to both his first two victims according to Crime Feed, but investigators were always stumped by murders, the murders of Miglin and Reese. Miglin's family had steadfastly insisted that he had no connection to Kuyanin, but the FBI file seemed to suggest that there was evidence that Miglin had previously partaken of Q QAnon services as an escort. When ABC contacted Miglin's family, his widow refused to discuss the matter, but his son confirmed that the information the FBI report was unsubstantiated. Uh, the unanswered questions. On December 31st, 1997, the Los Angeles Times reported that the investigation into Versace's murder and Cunanan's other killings had closed. The official verdict was that he had acted alone, but exactly why he had killed five people remained unclear. Miami Beach Police Chief Richard Barreto said, What we cannot establish is motive. It might have been a robbery. It could have been Andrew Cunanan seeking the exposure of gunning down a person of the statute. It could have been revenge. We all would like to know, especially in a high-profile case like this. But unfortunately, the real answers to that went down with the ship, so to speak. Also unknown are the connections Q Q Cunanan had to the owner of the houseboat the old, the old, that he ultimately committed suicide in. Police were unable to discover anything concrete but believed that there was some sort of connection. No confirmation of connection between Versace and Cunanan was ever made beyond claims by friends either and concrete evidence Cunanan knew Reese, Miglin, or Versace never materialized. In 2012, tribute to his life and death. In 2012, Donatelli Versace paid tribute to her brother with the designs of her Autumn Wisdom collection. According to New York Times review of the show, she unveiled it with the intention of gathering the courage needed to go back to her brother's work and pay homage to his inspiration. Most noticeable was the motif of the Byzantine cross Metal mesh and a lot of leather would help from German rock group called Das Glow. Donatella said that she had created the collection and the show around a phrase that her brother had used, rock and regal. I can look at it now with the smile, she says, of her loss. 
I remember my last moments with Gianni, the rehearsal, the show, but finally I have freedom and I'm not afraid. Okay. Now, if we're gonna add any conspiracy theories, okay, um, to this story, one scenario would be Donatella had him, Donatella sacrificed him, um, in a satanic ritual in order to become the main designer for Versace and have her and have the Versace, um, designs a hundred percent hers, uh, and another theory could be that Gianni Versace um, was trying to not mingle with the Illuminati anymore. Maybe not um, as involved as he was, or perhaps he his sexual orientation had caused an issue within the elite. Um, if he had AIDS, if he didn't have AIDS, perhaps he gave the wrong person AIDS and it was retaliation. Um, but I would think more on the lines of he was um, somebody sacrificed uh, to get ahead. Somebody sacrificed for fame, somebody sa sacrificed for money. Um, who knows? You know what I mean? It's one of those things uh, that can go either way um, when we're talking about conspiracy theory, you know, theories and uh, why he could have been murdered. Um, remember, a lot of these killers, um, you know, have to... They're puppets. They're they're just people that you know the elite get to do their bidding. Um, so it doesn't really matter why, you know. Um, but it's very very uh, you know normal for them to get a puppet. You know they're not going to go and do it themselves. Um, they also, there's also speculation that they cremated Gianni because he had HIV and they didn't want that secret to get out. Um, could that have been true? I don't know. Um... They do say that Versace was HIV positive at the time of his death, a fact that was confirmed by Miami detective who saw his autopsy report, according to journalists. Okay. So without seeing the report myself, I can't say if it really did say that or not, but according to this detective, he was HIV, HIV positive. Um, it says the designers had, and his family had spent years keeping this a secret from the public out of fear. It might hurt the fashion brands. Um, but in the wake of his tragic murder, we're faced with the fact that Versace's medical status might be made public. Um, that would have been a costly reveal, claims having been a $1.4 billion secret for the family. Um, uh, saying that this is why his brother Santo and his sister Donatella did everything in their power to get Versace's body from authorities after he was shot dead on the steps of his house. Um, they managed to pick up the body at 8.50 on July 16th, a little less than 24 hours after his death. And then there was a small private viewing for the family at St. Uh, Patrick's Cathedral before the slain designer was taken to be cremated and his ashen, ashes flown back to Italy, writes what happened. Uh, 
These precautions about keeping his HIV positive status private were taken prior to his death as well in hopes that Versace's dreams of having his company go public could be realized. The designer had just signed a deal with Morgan Stanley on July 10 to have the company manage the house, the fashion house's initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange. The news that he was HID positive at that time would have greatly impacted the placement value of Versace stock, which estimated as high as $1.4 billion. Um, his health was said to be on the mend. However, when the killer writes, who says the designer had claimed to be suffering from an inner ear cancer at his weakest points back in 95, the medications which became available around that time resulted in Versace's health improving dramatically in the years before his death. In the end, the fashion house didn't go public and to this day is still owned by the family. Um, Murphy elected to use the 99 book Vulgar Favors as the basis for the new season of Crime Story, which also takes a look at Andrew Cunningham's other victims during the cross-country killing spree. Reporting on Versace's medical condition and how the family handles his death is a big part of the Versace family's issues with the new program, which they voiced in, the, in a statement. Um, uh, uh, let's see, what does it say here? Um, the Versace family has neither authorized nor had any involvement whatsoever with the TV series about the death of Mr. Gianni Versace which should only be considered as a work of fiction, said the Versaces. The oath book itself is full of gossip and speculation. Orth never received any information from Versace's family, and she has no basis to make claims about the intimate personal life of Gianni or other family members. Um, I have not seen this American crime story, the assassination of Gianni Versace, which was on FX, but... I am going to um, definitely look into that tomorrow. Uh, and uh, see if it's worth... Um, what do you call? Sharing with you guys. Um, all, all we're given here is... The medical examiner's uh, letter, which states, uh, according to the initial the ad initial police investigation on July fifteenth, nineteen ninety seven, at approximately eight forty six a.m., the uh, Gianni Versace was returning home, putting the key in the front gate of his property. Hold on. When an unknown male approached him from behind and fired two shots into the back of the decadent's head, fire rescue responded and transported the deceased to Jackson Memorial Trauma Center, where he uh, received CPR in progress, unresponsive, no vital signs, left pupil fixed and dilated, and right eye EOM not intact. Uh, their uh, efforts to revive him were unsuccess um, unsuccessful. Uh, and he was pronounced dead at 9.20 uh, a.m. by Dr. Sleeman and Dr. Vivian Neva. Um, and I guess this was before they realized that he got shot in the face and not the back of his head because... As we know, um, he was shot in the face. So, oh, with that being said, it's another murder. We have no idea the true reason why uh, it occurred, but it did. Um, it was very devastating to the uh design world and fashion world and um still is to this day uh so on that note i hope he rests in peace and regardless whether he was hiv positive or not 
that has absolutely nothing to do with nothing. Um, that would not have changed my outlook on him, and I'm sure it wouldn't have changed anybody who was a Versace uh, fan or um, lover of their fashion. Uh, I don't think that would have changed. So, with that being said, that's the story um, of Gianni Versace and what happened to him. Um, if I find any anything else out, I will definitely make another video on this. If anybody has